A lot of foods that actually impair our health defenses, our circulation, our stem cells, our healthy gut microbiome. Meet Dr. William Lee, a world-renowned Harvard-trained medical doctor, researcher, president and founder of the Angiogenesis Foundation. His work has led to more than 40 FDA-approved therapeutics and devices for cancer, cardiovascular disease, wound healing and vision loss. He is also a New York Times best-selling author with Eat to Beat Disease, The New Science of How Your Body Can Heal Itself. He also published another book, Eat to Beat Diet, Burn Fat, Heal Your Metabolism, and Live Longer. Disclaimer. Please consult with a healthcare professional before making any health-related decisions or changes to your diet and lifestyle. Stem cells are essential for the body's ability to repair and regenerate tissues, playing a vital role in maintaining overall health. These remarkable cells have the unique ability to develop into various cell types, making them crucial for repairing damaged tissues, regenerating organs, and maintaining normal bodily functions. They act as a built-in repair system, constantly renewing themselves, and providing a source of new cells for the body to replace those that are lost due to injury, disease, or normal wear and tear. This regenerative capacity is what allows our bodies to heal from cuts, recover from illnesses, and maintain the function of vital organs over time. However, specific lifestyle choices can drastically impair these crucial cells, leading to long-term health issues. I think one of the greatest things about food is that, and food and health, is that it actually puts the agency of choice into our own individual hands. And so we make our own choices. Poor habits can deplete the number of stem cells, reduce their functionality, and hinder their ability to regenerate tissues effectively. The result is a compromised ability to heal, increased vulnerability to chronic diseases, and accelerated aging. In today's video, we'll focus on three main habits that Dr. William Lee identifies as particularly destructive to stem cells. 1. Smoking It's never too late to stop smoking, if you're smoking, which can affect your blood vessels and your circulation as well, as well as directly pickle your brain. Stem cells are particularly vulnerable to various common factors that impact our bodies throughout our lives. One of the most harmful of these factors is tobacco smoke. Dr. William Lee highlights the complex and detrimental effects of smoking on stem cells, revealing a nuanced understanding of how tobacco smoke impacts our body's natural regenerative systems. When a smoker inhales cigarette smoke, it leads to an immediate oxygen deficit. This deficit triggers a response where stem cells are mobilized from the bone marrow into the bloodstream. While this might initially appear beneficial as a protective mechanism, the chronic nature of smoking brings about severe long-term consequences. The process begins with the body's attempt to counteract the hypoxia caused by smoke inhalation. Stem cells, particularly endothelial progenitor cells that are crucial for repairing blood vessels, are released in greater numbers. However, this constant demand gradually depletes the reservoir of stem cells stored in the bone marrow. Over time, the bone marrow's capacity to regenerate and release these vital cells diminishes significantly. This depletion means there are fewer stem cells available for critical tasks like regeneration and repair of damaged tissues. The bone marrow, which acts as a crucial source of these regenerative cells, becomes less capable of replenishing the body's needs. Additionally, the remaining stem cells in smokers are compromised in their functionality. Research, as noted by Dr. Lee, indicates that these cells have a significantly reduced ability to self-replicate by as much as 80%. This self-replication is vital for maintaining a robust and responsive stem cell population. Without sufficient self-replication, the pool of available stem cells dwindles more rapidly than it can be replenished. Furthermore, their participation in the body's regenerative processes is reduced by nearly 40%, meaning their effectiveness in repairing and regenerating tissues is substantially impaired. This reduced functionality is critical because it directly impacts the body's ability to heal itself, respond to injuries, and maintain overall health. The implications of these deficits are profound. For smokers, the body's natural healing processes are severely hampered. The reduced number and impaired functionality of stem cells mean that the body is less equipped to repair everyday wear and tear, let alone more significant damage from injuries or diseases. This compromised regenerative capacity contributes to the heightened risk of developing serious conditions like cardiovascular disease and lung disease in smokers. The direct damage smoking causes to blood vessels, compounded by the stem cells' reduced regenerative abilities, 
explains the increased prevalence of these conditions among smokers. The vascular damage caused by smoking is exacerbated by the body's diminished ability to repair and maintain healthy blood vessels, leading to a vicious cycle of damage and insufficient repair. Furthermore, the impact extends beyond the individual smoker. Dr. Lee also notes the risks associated with secondhand smoke, which can impair the stem cells of non-smokers who are exposed. Even a short duration of exposure, such as 30 minutes, can significantly impair stem cell function in non-smokers. This underscores the broader public health implications of smoking and the importance of minimizing exposure to tobacco smoke for everyone. In essence, Dr. Lee's observations underscore a critical aspect of smoking's impact on health. It not only causes direct damage, but also undermines the body's natural defense and repair mechanisms, leading to a cascade of long-term health issues. If you are enjoying the video thus far, please subscribe to our channel and leave a comment to help support the channel. 2. Drinking Alcohol the fact of the matter is that none of the benefits that you get from any alcoholic beverages come from the ethanol, the alcohol itself. The thing you get the buzz from does nothing for your health. Researchers have conducted various studies to better understand the impact of alcohol on stem cells. One notable study involved monkeys that were given small daily amounts of alcohol. Surprisingly, these alcohol-consuming monkeys exhibited a higher number of circulating stem cells compared to their non-drinking counterparts. However, despite the increased number, the stem cells in these alcohol-exposed monkeys were significantly impaired in their regenerative roles. Dr. Lee describes these compromised cells as akin to inebriated individuals, struggling to perform their functions properly, much like a person who has difficulty walking a straight line while intoxicated there's no health benefit from it. it's a toxin it's a toxin for virtually every organ in our body it, it kills your brain kills your liver and you don't have to drink very much frankly of pure ethanol the pure stuff to knock yourself off uh it is actually a poison one of the most severe consequences of alcohol consumption is fetal alcohol syndrome which occurs when pregnant women consume large amounts of alcohol this syndrome results in permanent brain damage and growth abnormalities in the developing fetus the toxicity of alcohol to fetal stem cells plays a crucial role in this condition. Researchers from Louisiana State University found that the devastation caused by fetal alcohol syndrome in mouse models of fetal development was partly due to the damage inflicted on stem cells. The impairment of these vital cells disrupts normal development, leading to severe and irreversible consequences. Binge drinking poses another significant threat to stem cell health. A study conducted by researchers at the University of Kentucky revealed that binge drinking markedly reduces the activity of brain stem cells known as oligodendrocyte progenitors. These cells are essential for generating new neurons. The detrimental effects were particularly pronounced in the hippocampus region of the brain, which is crucial for building both short and long-term memory. The impairment of these progenitor cells can lead to cognitive deficits and memory problems. However, there is a silver lining. This damage can be reversed if binge drinking is discontinued, highlighting the brain's remarkable resilience and capacity for recovery when alcohol consumption is halted. Alcohol is a toxin for the brain. Okay, alcoholic dementia is a real thing. So cutting down or cutting out your drinking could be a very, very uh, important part of uh, lifestyle. Dr. Lee's research emphasizes the broader implications of alcohol consumption on overall health. Beyond the immediate effects on the brain and fetal development, Heavy drinking also compromises the body's natural regenerative processes. Stem cells, which are critical for repairing and maintaining tissues, are less effective in individuals who consume large amounts of alcohol. This reduction in stem cell functionality can lead to a host of health problems, including increased vulnerability to injuries, slower healing processes, and a heightened risk of chronic diseases such as cardiovascular disease and liver cirrhosis. 3. Eating a high-fat, high-sugar diet now, we know that added sugar is uh, something that is very, that taxes the body's metabolism, right? Dr. Lee's research delves deeply into the profound impact of diet on stem cell health, particularly highlighting the detrimental effects of a high-fat, high-sugar diet. Stem cells are essential for the body's ability to repair and regenerate tissues, and their functionality is heavily influenced by the nutrients and compounds we consume. The implications of consuming a diet high in fat and sugar are far-reaching and destructive, contributing to systemic inflammation, oxidative stress, and metabolic imbalances. 
when you actually have overloaded yourself with sugars or carbs is really a feeling of lethargy or not having as much energy, right? And it sounds ironic because sugar gives you energy, right? Anybody knows you drink energy drinks. It's like loaded with sugar and caffeine. You, you think that it would actually pump you up, but it's really the fact that the aftermath of having too many of, of an overload of sugar and carbs tends to make you feel tired all of which negatively affect stem cell viability and function. High levels of dietary fat can lead to the accumulation of fatty deposits in various tissues, including the liver and arteries. This accumulation disrupts normal metabolic processes and creates a hostile environment for stem cells, impairing their ability to function effectively. Fatty deposits in the arteries, for example, can lead to atherosclerosis a condition characterized by the hardening and narrowing of the arteries, which further hampers the circulation and delivery of essential nutrients to tissues, exacerbating the decline in stem cell health. High sugar intake is equally harmful to stem cells. Elevated blood glucose levels can cause glycation, a process where sugar molecules bind to proteins and lipids, forming advanced glycation end products, ages. These ages damage stem cells by interfering with their normal function reducing their ability to multiply and repair tissues. This is particularly concerning in the context of diabetes, where chronic high blood sugar levels can significantly impair stem cell activity. Diabetic conditions lead to a reduced regeneration capacity and increased susceptibility to chronic diseases. Chronic diseases such as diabetes are particularly detrimental to stem cells. Individuals with diabetes not only have fewer stem cells, but the ones they do have are significantly impaired. High blood sugar levels create a hostile environment for stem cells, reducing their ability to regenerate tissue, multiply, and move effectively within the body. This impairment is evident in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes results from an autoimmune attack on insulin-producing cells, while type 2 diabetes is often related to genetics, lifestyle, and obesity, leading to insulin resistance or insufficient insulin production. A study from New York University showed that in type 2 diabetes, endothelial progenitor cells growth is compromised by almost 50%, with even greater impairment if blood sugar levels are poorly controlled. These cells are also 2.5 times less likely to participate in forming new blood vessels compared to non-diabetic stem cells. Similar findings have been reported in type 1 diabetes by researchers in the Netherlands, highlighting the widespread impact of diabetes on stem cell health. These studies underscore the necessity for stringent blood sugar management to maintain stem cell functionality. The global diabetes pandemic, affecting over 422 million people and causing 1.6 million deaths annually, exacerbates the issue of impaired stem cell health. Diabetes is a major contributor to heart attacks, strokes, blindness, kidney failure, chronic wounds, and amputations, all of which are linked to dysfunctional stem cells. Thus, Protecting or improving the performance of stem cells in conditions such as diabetes, hyperlipidemia, and aging could be life-saving. Peripheral vascular disease is a severe condition often accompanying long-standing diabetes. This condition involves severe atherosclerotic narrowing of arteries, which chokes off the oxygen supply to the legs. As the condition worsens over time, it leads to ischemic leg ulcers and, in severe cases, gangrene. Research from the University of Padova in Italy showed that patients with diabetic vascular disease have 47% fewer circulating stem cells compared to healthy individuals. Those with the fewest stem cells are more likely to develop ischemic foot ulcers, underscoring the essential role of stem cells in wound healing and tissue repair. Effective diabetes management is crucial for protecting the regenerative defense system. Better blood sugar control leads to improved stem cell health while poor diabetes management severely impairs stem cell function. Enhancing blood sugar control can increase the number and improve the function of endothelial progenitor cells, highlighting the vital importance of vigilant diabetes management for overall health and longevity. So I would say diabetes is kind of a, a di type two diabetes is kind of a wear and tear condition. Let's not call it a disease, let's call it a condition. And it's something that, um, that the earlier we do something to prevent getting into that situation, the better it is, obviously. So some of the basic things, you know, staying at physically active, eating in moderation, I think is a really important thing, whether you, before you have diabetes 
while you have diabetes and after you actually reverse diabetes. Dr. Lee's research underscores the necessity of adopting a balanced diet rich in nutrients that support stem cell health. Foods high in antioxidants, healthy fats, and fiber can mitigate the negative effects of a high-fat, high-sugar diet. Antioxidants help neutralize oxidative stress, while healthy fats from sources like fish, nuts, and avocados support cell membrane integrity and function. Fiber-rich foods promote a healthy gut microbiome, which in turn supports systemic health and reduces inflammation. Also, adopting dietary strategies that increase high-density lipoprotein (HDL) levels can be particularly beneficial. HDL, known as the good cholesterol, plays a protective role by slowing down the programmed cell death of endothelial progenitor cells, which are crucial for maintaining vascular health. This kind of vascular protection is a key reason why HDL is considered beneficial.